Hi everyone, welcome back. In the last video we protected our routes and now we did all the things we have to do to be able to log in and to access this restricted area, so to say. Now what we will do in this video will be pure HTML and styling because we will create our dashboard view, so to say, the view where we can create a post and see all posts. Now if you're not interested in that, well, feel free to skip this video. In the next video we will continue with hooking up some logic to actually be able to create posts. Let's dive into this. So currently our dashboard looks like this. Not too exciting, I have to say. Let's change this. I'll start with the HTML part and I'll start with extending from our layouts master file so that the dashboard, like the welcome view does, uses our master file and this kind of, we have the header at the top and so on. Um, style. So to do this I first extend then I create my content section here. Remember this will be whatever I write between those two section um, expressions here will be what will get injected here. So oops, wrong file. So now what I'm going to do here is I'll create a section, so an HTML tag section. Um, which I will give a, cl a class of row for our bootstrap um, framework and a class of new post which I will manually style. Now in this section I will have a bootstrap column and I will add some offset so that it is centered. Now this will be the new post section as the CSS class implies and what I'm doing here is I'll add a header, headers are not only for navigation and in this header I'll have an h3 tag where I say what do you have to say and then I want to add a form, I'll leave the action empty as of now and here I'll add a form group, again this is a bootstrap class which will just format my form nicely and I will add a text area which I will give a name of new post, ID of new post, don't need the columns but I will set it to five rows and I'll add a placeholder where I say your post. So that's my text area and I also will give this text area class of form control so that bootstrap formats it, formats it nicely. Now below my form group div I'll add a button of type submit which I will give a class button and then button primary so that it is this nice blue button and I will just give it a label of create post. So that will be my new post. Um, section and if I load this uh, it's gonna look okay because we're mostly using bootstrap classes so this will be how we create new posts. Now below my new post section I'll add another section which will firstly also be a row, a bootstrap row and secondly which will get the posts um, class which I will also manually style or use in my own CSS file. Now in here I want to loop through all the posts and output them. Now obviously we don't have any posts as of now, we don't even have the database, so I'm just going to create some dummy HTML code here, which will be first um, again my bootstrap columns, so just to have that nice styling here out of the box. Then again a header where I say whatever people people say. And then here I want to have an article for each post which I will give a class of post. So when we loop through all our posts what we will do is we will create this block for each post we find. So this will be our dummy skeleton for each post what we're creating here. And there should be a paragraph with some dummy text for now. This will be the actual blog post text or post text in the full application obviously and below this text I'll have a div with a class of info um, where I will say post by then this will be the author which we would also retrieve from the database for now I'm just using my name here um, on and then 
state which would also be retrieved from the database. Then I'll add another div which I will call or which I will give a CSS class of interaction and here I will have various interaction methods or possibilities. Now I'm first going to list them all divided by this pipe symbol here. So we will have a like and a dislike and we'll have the possibility to edit our post oops, and the possibility to delete it. Now obviously when we're looping through this we'll have to check um, if this is our post or not because if it's our post then we should not be able to like or dislike it but to be able to edit and delete it but if it's the post of another person we want to make sure that we can only like and dislike it and not mess around with it, right? So that's, that's that and now let me just copy this article here and paste it one more time so that we have two dummy posts here and now if I reload this page you see yeah that doesn't look too nice and oh, why is it not centered? Oh, I misspelled this class here. Offset free. So, so that um, that could use some additional styling, I guess. But you see the general idea um, how our post should look like. Now let me add some styling. I will for this go into my public folder here, and I'll create a new subdirectory which I'll call source. And in this subdirectory, I'll create an additional new subdirectory called CSS. This is where, where I will store my CSS files. Now here, I will create a new CSS file, which I will call main.css. In this file, I only want to do some additional styling, not too much. First, I'll style my new post section a bit. I will give it some additional padding from top and bottom, and I will give it a little border at the bottom so that we have a clearer separation to our posts area. Then the header in our new post section as well as the header in our posts section should have a margin bottom of 20 pixels just to set it a little bit more apart from the content below it. Then I will in my post section format my post article such that I give it a little bit of padding to the left to kind of, um, if we have a look here, to indent it a bit in, to the right. And I will give it a nice little visual sugar here by adding a border where I picked a nice red, dark red, um, which will appear on the left of the post and just add some margin to the bottom, so to the next post of 30 pixels. And last thing is that info bar here, I want to format that too, so I'll select it by yeah, just going into the info div in my post article in my post section, and here I want to first give it some dark gray color, and I will make it italic. Okay, so now to be able to actually see these changes I have to import the style sheet and now this is a bit uh, tricky or not very tricky but you have to do, know how to do it right. Um, I could use like the, the direct path here so I could use source CSS main CSS. But this would be, uh, or would lead to possible problems because, well, in a Laravel application, um, when we use our router, we can have URLs which not actually reflect the, the real um, directory structure, right? right? Um, like here, for example, where we have slash dashboard. Now, if you were to look for source CSS, main CSS in this folder, it would not work because that is not a folder. That is just uh, the URL and how we style it. So to get an absolute reference to our file, I will use a Laravel helper here. So I'll enter my blade um, expression here with the double curly braces. And then I'll use the URL facade and here the to method. 
And now I can specify the path as if I always were in the public folder here. So I'm routing now to source CSS, main.css. Now, if you do have problems with that too here, which sometimes can occur depending on your development environment, well, you could also use the URL secure method, which, which just enforce HTTPS, um, or you could use the assets helper method and then specify the path here. Now, in this case, I'm using this and this should work in most of the cases. So let me reload, reload this page now. As you can see, it's much nicer looking now. We get this border here, beautiful, and our posts are much more nice to look at uh, right now. So that is just the, the styling, the visual part. In the next video, we'll take care about actually being able to create posts. See you there, bye.